Okay, here we are picking up where we left off last time on creating a number pad uh, that will grab, that we can dial in numbers and have it grab a phone number we can call and then we can call that number and it will give us fake caller ID. Uh, hopefully you've been following the tutorials or else you're going to be completely lost here. So if you don't know what we're doing, watch the other tutorials. Uh, here we go. I'm going to just, you know, exit out of this and I'll real quick, I'll run the uh, Py, Py, uh, Python script that we've been working on. So I start it up. There it is. This is our little number pad here. You can see we can resize it here. And we can type in a number, blah, 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 blah. And when we hit send in the terminal here, it says dialing and it says the number that we have typed in. That's great. I mean, that's, that's, we're mostly there. But what we need to do is we need to contact um, callerIDfaker.com, give it the information of our phone number, the phone number we want to call, and the phone number we want to show up in the caller ID. And then we have to grab what it responds with and look for the phone number that's constantly changing that we have to dial from the phone number we gave them for that to take effect. Uh, so first off, let's create two more buttons. Because um, right now we've got a send button. But before that, we need to input the number that we're going to call and the number we want to show up on the caller ID. So I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. But once again, just use the text editor that you uh, prefer to use. So I'm going to go into Vim. I'm going to come down here. There's our send button. Let's put it in before our send button. We'll create a button. We'll call it um, call underscore button and it will be a GTK button. And the button will be labeled add call number. So we're creating an object that we're calling call button. Once again, that's a name that we create and within reason it can be anything we want. And then over here we're saying that that object is using a GTK module and it's going to be a button with a capital B and then this is what the label will be. Uh, next we're going to have to connect it to a function, create that function and add it to our window. So real quick, let's uh, connect it to a function and then we'll go and create that function. Um, well, you know what, before we do that, let's just add it so we can see it, even though it won't do anything. So we're going to say um, box2, so that's our vertical box that we've created, and we're going to say pack start, and we're going to basically take our object, our call button, and place that within our, and it's not box2, it should just be box because one of our um, containers is actually a table. So we're putting it inside the same box that we're putting the send button into. So here you can see we put in the send button and before that we're gonna put in the call button and they will be in the order that they are placed in the script in this situation. So with that, we can save this. Once again, run our script. Here is the window we just created and there is our call number button. Uh, and actually, we do want to create a second box. I just remembered why I was thinking there was two boxes. Because we don't want these stacked on top of each other like that, because that makes the dialing numbers even smaller. We want them actually to be uh, horizontal instead of vertically stacked. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another box. Put uh, We're going to create a horizontal box, and we're going to put it inside our vertical box and then put these buttons inside there. So let's do that real quick. We'll come down here. And right here, before we create that button, we'll create a new box. We'll call it box2 equals, and we're going to say it's a GTK dot um, V box for vertical box. I'm sorry, horizontal box, H box, capital H, capital B. And so we've created that, and now we need to put that inside our first box. And it will go in below the table because that's where it is where in the script. So here we're packing in the table that we created, which is the number pad, and then below that, we're going to say box dot pack start, and we're going to put in our new object of box two. Then we just have to come down here to our call button, and instead of box, we're just going to say box two, and same for our send button. We should save that, we should run it, and here you can see we have now set so those bottom buttons instead of being vertically are stacked horizontally or aligned horizontally. 
So we've created that button. Let's create one more button before we add functionality to this one. We'll say fake button. So this would be the number, the when we type in the number we want to show up on the caller ID, this button will add that in once we give it functionality. So we're creating an object called fake button and it's going to be a GTK button and it will say its label will be add fake number and we will say to add that to box 2 and since in the script it is being placed between uh, call button and send button that is where it will be in the actual GUI so let's go ahead save this and there you go we have three buttons down here so what we want to do is we want to be able to type in the number we want to call so let's say you know six 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 and then I'll hit add call and it will basically add that to a variable of the number that we want to call and uh, also clear out this so we can start typing in what number we want to show up on the caller ID when we'll say nine 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 add fake and it will add that number to a variable and then when we click send it will take the variable that is our phone number, a variable the number that we want to call, and the variable of the fake uh, number for the caller ID and send it all to the caller ID faker.com. So let's start giving those buttons some functionality and we will define some functions here for us to connect to it. First we'll create a function for our add call button. Um, so our call add call yeah call button I forget what we named it doesn't matter at this point okay so we're gonna say define and we will say add call so we're creating a function and with GTK the first thing first um, variable that is sent to a function when you're using a widget is the widget itself so we want to throw this in here where it says widget really you can call it pretty much whatever you want but which is pretty appropriate. If you don't have that, you'll get an error saying that one argument was sent and zero are required. So we've got that, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create, well, we're going to reset a variable that we haven't created yet. Sorry for me going a little out of order here. And we're going to say a variable call num is going to be equal to our entry box, which is our text box, which will contain the number. And we will say to get the text from it. And then right after that, we're going to say entry dot set text. And then we do two quotations here with nothing in between. And that will clear out our text box. So real quick, we can run that. And we'll type in a number, blah, 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 blah 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 whatever number we want and when I click oh we have not connected the button yet we created the function but we have to connect the button to it it's called add call so we're gonna come back down here to our call button and we're gonna say call button dot connect when it's clicked we're going to use add call function so now when we run it We'll type in a number and when we click add call you'll see it cleared out so but before it clears out this little uh, entry box here it's actually going to be adding that number to our variable labeled um, call num we're going to create a function for our fake number uh, for the fake caller ID we'll just say add fake and it's going to be almost identical so for one slight difference is the variable that we're going to add the number to we'll create a variable here called fake num equals and the same thing entry dot get underscore text once again that is the text box that we have already created that the numbers going into when we type on the number pad and then when we hit our add fake number button um, it's going to run this function, grab the, any text inside that text box, add it to this fake num variable, and then take that entry box and set the text 
equal to blank. So it clears it out. So here we go, we ran it again. We'll type in a number. Once again, if we hit add call, it grabs that number, puts it into a variable, and clears out our entry box up here. I'll put in another number, and it does the same thing, but to a different variable. Ah, once again, we forgot to connect the button to uh, the uh, to the function. So we're going to go down here. Fake button dot connect. So we're connecting that button when it is clicked. So when the button is clicked, we're going to run the function add fake. Now we can type in this number. Blah 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 blah. Ooh. Blah 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 blah. Add call. Blah 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 blah. Add fake. And each time it grabs that number and clears out that entry box. Now if you did it again, let's say you typed the, the call number wrong and you clicked add call, you can see, you can just do it and it will override that variable each time. So that's not an issue. Um, and we'll close that there. And uh, real quick, what I want to do before I finish this tutorial, and we'll continue this in the next video, is we're going to create three global variables here. Um, a lot of people, some people don't like having global variables. A little script like this, I don't think it's going to hurt. But we're going to have a variable that is going to be our phone number. Um, so the number we're going to call from. So instead of having another button where we type this all in, especially since we're going to look at doing this on our cell phones, if you have an N900, your cell phone number is not going to change. So we're going to say my number. And for right now, we'll just say 555, 555, 555. And we'll create another variable that we actually create in the function, but we're going to create a default here for it. And for fake num. Basically, um, this is just to avoid some errors if you, when you click send. If you haven't typed in a call number or a fake number, um, you'll get an error. But really, you'll get an error from the website if you leave it at zero as well. So it's not a huge deal whether you put these up here or not, these two. Um, but I do, just because I, I rather get an error from the website than an error in my own script, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to change this send press function, and we're going to have it instead just displaying the number that we've typed. It's actually going to take all the numbers, my phone number, call num, and fake num, and send them to caller-idfaker.com retrieve the information and then weed out any of the excess information and return just the number that we need to call for this whole process to take place. Then we'll be pretty much done as far as using it on the computer. Uh, then we will change that slightly in one more video after that so that on the N900 instead of saying call this number it will actually dial the phone number for you. So I hope that you're enjoying these tutorials. We are almost done. I think just two more videos and we should have this complete. I thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description. I should, if I don't forget, have this code that we've typed out so far in the first link in the description. On my website's filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.